Good morning. Okay, so I've just uh, left my cabin, which I stayed in last night, which is just up there. It was very nice. I made a little video about that. And today, um, I'm going to try and hit a couple of things on the NC500 route. And the first one is, if I'm pronouncing this right, Urquhart Castle, which is on the banks of Loch Ness, which um, dates back to the 1500s. Then, if I make it in time, um, I'm going to try and find a spot where I can view the oil rig graveyard. Goodbye log cabin. Thank you for the memories. Now this is the little lane I came up last night in the pitch black. Hang on, is my window open? Yeah, why is my window open? I came down here in the pitch black and uh, nearly wrecked the bottom of my in car. In 100 yards, turn right towards AA31. I think that's where the cows are coming from, mooing. Turn left onto AA31. Here we go. Ow. Right, we are here at Oh You Quiet Castle. <coughs> Castle? I didn't even know what it's called. Let's go have a look. Thank you. Lovely. Just in the doors down the stairs. Take it down the Lovely. Thanks so much. Cheers. So I'm here, right at the edge of the Loch Ness, which is 230 metres deep in places, which is amazing really. In a minute I'm going to go up into uh, Urquhart Castle, Urquhart, I can't say the name of the castle, I'm going in the castle in a minute um, to have a look round, see what we can find and see what history is in there loads considering it was um, built in the 1500s. Amazing. And my nose is about to fall off because it's freezing. But look at that. Loch Ness. Okay I'm gonna go along the bank rather than go up around this way. See if I can try not to Fall in the water. Cool, this was a prison cell. Thank you. 
So this is what people would have, who are guarding the castle, would have looked out to to try and protect it from invaders or see who was coming to visit for dinner. And then you come in the gates and there was one main gate and then another two big huge doors behind that and if they didn't like the look of you, they dropped stones on you and objects to tell you you weren't welcome. This area here is where the most important person, the keeper, would have lived. And in that bit there is a bed chamber. If you can see over in the distance <clears throat> that, I can't remember what the actual name of it is called but it's like a slingshot and when people would try and siege the castle, they'd fire big rocks up to 70, ki uh, up to 70 kilograms with those things that apparently could fire them up to 200 meters, which is quite a long way to fling 70 kilograms. Apologies for not talking too much to us either. It's my first time vlogging in front of everyone walking around the castle. It feels a bit weird poking the camera at my face, talking to myself, but I'm doing my best.
down or up. Let's go up. Wow, these are steep. Time to go In the storeroom I was just in, I walked in there and I was sort of, thought I smelled something quite sweet. I was like, wow, I can actually smell the, the real authentic smells from all, you know, from that long ago. And then about a minute later, it dawned on me that um, basically I just walked into someone's vape fumes. Someone's just in the storeroom having a little, um, having a little vape break. So cancel that. It's not, uh, authentic smells from the 1500s. It's cherry and vanilla vape. So this room here is where is a kiln where they dried out all the corn uh, for their porridge and for their oats and for, for stuff like that. And breads. Also, the reason I'm now, you can see my camera, is because, like an idiot, Batteries ran out, so I'm on my phone, so the sound might not be as good. Absolute tool. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best for as much as I know how. So I think this area behind me, if you can see that, this is where the Great Hall was, where they used to have feasts and banquets and music and maybe strippers, I don't know. Have they done that back then? Uh, basically all sorts of, all forms of entertainment. And probably got uh, very happily drunk. There's the old uh, people out scouring the lock for the Loch Ness Monster. Behind me is the main bit. Sorry about the shot with my head just in it. Okay, so I'm back in my car now, and um, I'm just going to take this moment to clear a few things up because, um, well, first and foremost, I made a rookie mistake, and my uh, main camera ran out of battery while I was filming the castle. So now I'm on my phone. I'm going to swap the batteries over in a minute. Um, idiot, rookie. Secondly, I was doing my best when the camera was actually had battery to try and explain a little bits about the castle and things like that. Now, this is the first time I've ever done a vlog in front of other people, um, you know, and it's a little bit intimidating. Um, so I was just trying to do my best. So hopefully with the footage that I've got, 
I'm going to manage to pull something together when I edit it to make it make sense, if that makes sense. When I first went in there, there was a little, in the gift shop, there was a little area where you could go in and watch a movie about the castle. I didn't watch that until the very end. So, um, when I couldn't pronounce the name of the castle, now I can. It's called Urquhart. <laughs> Not Urquhart, Urquhart, Urquhart Castle, Urquhart. I'm not very good at this. Also, I think I mentioned that the castle was built in the 1500s, which is not true. The footprint of the castle was found way, 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 way before that. Um, and in the 1200s is when the castle saw a lot of fighting between the Scots and the English um, for the in the War of Independence. I'm not a historian. Uh, I dropped out of history from school, which I regret. Um, so I'm not trying to make this video as a history lesson. I'm just trying to show you how cool the castle is um, and give you a couple of facts along the way, I hope. Uh, anyway, I'm boring you to death. Um, if you're still with me, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to bore you to death some more. But um, now we're going to shoot off and I'm going to carry on with the with the hunt for the uh, oil rig graveyard. I'm going to get it on the map. So I'm going to go. I might stop off for somewhere uh, or something to eat in between. I don't know. Let's see. Um, let's try and do it with some camera battery. So I've driven down from the castle to a place called Cromorty to try and hunt down these uh, abandoned oil rigs and check it out behind me. There's some of them there. Over there, I don't know if they're building them though over there or dismantling them and got a ship over there that's doing something. And then that ship over there looks as though it's seen better days. Now apparently from what I've read is that uh, these oil rigs, well apparently the price of oil went down so these oil rigs weren't needed anymore. Now I don't know if that's true uh, today because the oil seems to be going up more than ever uh, but that's what I read online anyway and um, so they didn't know what to do with these oil rigs so they brought them around to this sort of bay area um, just to leave them there, leave them in situ just in case they're ever needed again and um, they weigh about a thousand tons each and they're dragged in uh, and they're settled down um, and the chances are they're just gonna they're just gonna rot uh, in situ where they are so I'm just walking along this little beach and I've spotted a, a bigger one now uh, I hope you can hear me because it's quite windy down here so I hope you can pick up the sound but I'm by no means an oil rig pervert I mean this is the first time I've actually seen one fairly close up uh, but it's just something that I saw online that I thought would be different and quite cool to come and have a look at when I see one close up you don't realise the actual sort of size and the scale of them they're huge this, look at this one Now unfortunately on my camera there's not a zoom so I'm going to try and get some closer up shots of it on my on my phone to try and see the uh, try and get a sort of perspective of this of the scale of it Now in the waters behind me, 
there's apparently a chance of seeing um, dolphins. Now they are about all year round but your best chance is apparently from what I've seen um, during the summer months. Now being the end of September there's probably probably not going to see any. I haven't seen any today um, but yeah out there in those waters is where you can see dolphins. I'll tell you what would be cool is if you could get a drone up near some of these rigs that'd be awesome but one I haven't got a drone and two even if I did I wouldn't know how to fly it and uh, I'd probably end up losing it in the sea. Oh, what's down here? falling in here. It looks freezing. Look at the current as well, look at the tide. I am holding on. I am not going in the drink today. No sir. E. Let's get out of here. I've come to another little spot which is called Udale Bay and this gives a different view of the um, I can't even think what I'm saying now the oil rigs so we've got one there and all those ones over there and where I was just a minute ago was somewhere on this little bit of land there Oh, it's gone out of focus. This little bit of land there, looking out to these. So there it is, guys. The abandoned oil rigs, probably from the North Sea. <whistles> Goodbye. Goodbye, oil rigs. Hopefully I'm not locked out of my car. Well, that's it. That was a nice little adventure today. Hopefully, um, it gave you a little insight on my first day here doing the NC500. And, you know, we visited a castle, albeit that I was calling it the wrong name for most of the time, and I was giving out the wrong dates. But we learn everything, we learn something new every day, don't we? So, all that's left for me to do now is to head to my hotel where I need some food and I need a beer and I'm going to chill out. So, thank you for watching. From me here, in this little bay area, with the oil rigs from the North Sea in the background. See you later. This is my room that I've checked into for the night. And I've got the choice of either bed. How lucky am I?